I get it. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. Well, cheers. Welcome back to the Fermentation Adventure. If you have been following along this year, you know we have been on a ginger ale making kick. Oh yeah, we made regular traditional ginger ale using the boiling method. Ginger ale using juiced ginger, fresh and spicy. We used even our fresh lemongrass and made lemongrass ginger ale. Oh, all kinds of things. We even made a Q&A video on all your questions ginger bug and ginger ale related. But the one question that you all want to know, and we want to know, and that we haven't been able to answer until today's video, is just how much alcohol is in this ginger ale? We are going to answer that question today. Join us on this journey to explore the world of fermentation. If you'd like to learn how to make ferments like these, start now by clicking subscribe and hitting that bell so you don't miss a thing. So you can tell we love ginger ale and we're really excited to have this much ginger ale in front of us. We've made a fresh batch of ginger ale every day for each of the last seven days. So as we measure them for alcohol content, we're going to start with the most recent first, which is technically the one that we made yesterday. So that will be a one day old ferment. Then we will move on from there to two days old of fermentation. Then we're going to go three, four, five, six, and then all the way to seven days of fermentation to find out over time how much alcohol does it contain. So we have a full week of results here, a full week of data that we can test. This is so awesome. It's so cool. And the other thing, we're going to be able to taste it along the way and see how we like it. Oh yeah, definitely. Are you seeing any difference between the seven days? Wow, I see a lot of bubbles oh. all along the spectrum. They were kind of placed over here and I very gently moved them over and even just a little bit of disturbing, it started bubbling like crazy. Once we stir this, it's going to be crazy because a lot of the ginger, like the strong ginger flavor mm -hmm. and the ginger pulp is sitting at all the bottom. I do notice though that over time, they kind of start to settle. All of our ferments do that. So the most recent one was this one and you can see it's a little bit more cloudy than the others. This one before I started moving, it was completely clear. So before we get into the alcohol content, we want you to know which recipe we actually use to make this ginger ale. If you make the ginger ale using different recipes and different sugar amounts, you're gonna get a vastly different amount of alcohol. Oh yeah, and we wanted to keep this experiment nice and tidy for you. So the recipe we used for this experiment and testing all of the alcohol content is actually our original traditional ginger ale using boiled method. So if you want the same results, go ahead and check out that recipe. We're gonna include it at the end of this video. And also if you want it right now, you just can't wait, we're gonna include it in the description below. So since we've all had the same question of how much alcohol is in this, we decided it's time to answer the question. And we got something that beer brewers use. We're measuring this using what's called a hydrometer. What it does is it measures the specific gravity. Woo, that sounds complicated. What is specific gravity? Pay attention to this because it's a little bit complicated. Specific gravity is the ratio of the density of a substance, so ginger ale, compared to the density of a standard. And in this case, the standard is water. And we have water actually in our hydrometer right now so we can test it and make sure, you should always test it, right? And it's right there at a one level. That's where water should be. But you don't care about specific gravity. You wanna know what is the alcohol. But to do this, you need two measurements. You need the original gravity and you need the final gravity. And in between, some fermentation happens. As all the yeast and bacteria start eating the sugar, the liquid becomes less dense. So if you take the difference between the two and plug that into a formula, you can get the ABV or the alcohol by volume. And that's what you would normally see on a beer bottle. That is amazing. I learn something every day. And this one's always teaching me stuff about fermentation. He has been for years. So we went ahead and took the starting gravity on each of these ferments because even though we use the same exact recipe in all of them, if I didn't take the most exact measurements, there will be slight differences in the gravity within each of these, including the exact same ginger bug. So that way we don't have any variances in our recipe. 
you can tell we really used quite a bit over the last week. <laughs> Check out how much. We're gonna have to feed it, we're gonna have to put more sugar, and we're gonna have to add some more water and ginger pieces. Yeah. So we already have that noted, and that is what we're going to be comparing to when we measure the final gravity of each of these bottles. So without further ado, let's get into measuring the specific gravity, the final specific gravity of our first test subject. This one we made yesterday. And so it's been fermenting for one day. Let's have a look. Ooh. It looks good. It looks just as we would expect a ginger ale to look after one day, very bubbly. Oh, it smells so good. We're gonna let this one ferment out. But for now, we gotta test the gravity. First thing we're gonna do is give it a good stir. There's a lot of this foamy, bubbly stuff, which is totally normal, but first thing we're gonna do is get rid of some of these bubbles. So we already gave it a stir, and we're just gonna go back and forth to get rid of the fizz so that we can get an accurate reading on our hydrometer. Now, as this is fermenting, there's gonna be a lot of bubbles building up in there, a lot of carbonation. So the more you pour it back and forth, it releases a lot of that carbon dioxide. When we first make this, the alcohol is zero. What is it at 24 hours later? I wouldn't think very much, but you never know. Our watermelon soda had a lot after one day. You can see that there's still a little bit of fizz there, but we wanna fill it to about this level because what's gonna happen is we have this weight. So this part right here is the hydrometer. He just had to correct me on that one. And so it's a kind of a weight at the bottom and it's glass. You got to be very careful. It'll fall over, it'll break, and then you'd have to buy another one. I know. We got to be careful. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, she actually looks like a scientist right now with her test tube and her little thermometer. I need a white coat. I should have wore a white coat. <laughs> oh man. Missed opportunity. And I'm going to put this right into the beaker. This is just like chemistry class. The foam at the top is what we were trying to avoid. So sometimes I kind of bob it up and down a little bit. I was able to kind of get most of the foam to disappear this way. Maybe give it a little bit of a spin. We're looking for those tick marks. It looks like 1.05. Yeah, 1.05. There's a little bit of alcohol in here. Probably a little bit. When we ordered this hydrometer kit, it came with a conversion table. But since we want to do it exactly the way beer brewers do it, we're going to use their formula. Alcohol by volume, or ABV, is original gravity minus final gravity. And you take that one number and you multiply it by 131.25. And this will give you your ABV. So let's plug in the numbers and see what our content is after one day. The original starting gravity, 1.052. Final gravity of 1.05. And the result is after fermentation for one day? A whopping 0.26%. So this one has almost 0.3% alcohol. That's pretty interesting. After that, I think it's going to increase. Yeah, as we go along, that'll be a little interesting to see how strong leaves are going to get. Let's check one more day of fermentation. ba -da! We've got to stir this up because we got to get everything nice and even before we put in the hydrometer. I bet there's going to be a lot of fizz. It looks like 1.048. Let okay. me write that down and do the calculations. This is so exciting. And the result of our two day fermentation is... Drum roll please. 0.79%. Hey, we're starting to get up there. Wow. That's more than double, actually. <laughs> Interesting. All Let's right. try for day number three. Day three. Still looks like little champagne bubbles. It's beautiful. I love the smell of ginger ale. I wish I could drink all of these right now. So for this one, it looks like it's 1.042. And the results for three days of fermentation. 1.31%. We have broken 1%. Ta-da! After three days. I cannot wait to see what happens in four, five, six, and seven. There's much less bubbles showing on the top of this one. So fermentation process is definitely moving along. It looks like 1.044. Now what are the results after four days of fermentation? This one's the shocker. It is again 1.31%. Oh my God. So it must have slowed down just a little bit, which is not surprising 
because usually it's very, very frothy and then it starts to gradually taper off. Mm -hmm. Day number five. Day five. Look at all those champagne bubbles. It's still very active. Maybe we'll get a different percent now. It's so hard to read sometimes. I think we're at 1.04. Ooh, which is a change. Are you ready? I can't, I can't help but feeling like this is like reading off lottery numbers. <laughs> After five days of fermentation, we have finally a breakthrough at 1.58. We have Whoop. made it to one and a half percent. Now we're not expecting this to become very alcoholic. Maybe over time in the refrigerator it would, but there's still gonna be some change. So I'm expecting a little more change in day six and seven. This is so amazing. This is very cool. Without adding any kind of yeast or anything, this is all just natural fermentation. Day six, day let's six. get to it. There are much fewer bubbles. Ooh, that's a close call. Looks like 1.034. So the results of day six. Now this is the big one. We got a whopping 2.36%. Wow. So if you remember, day five had 1.58%. So That's crazy, we're getting there. We just jumped by over, no, almost a whole percent. Whoa. What? We're getting some alcohol. So it was slow, it got kind of steady. It was like, okay, I'm gonna hang out here for a bit. Then some movement started to happen again by day five. Day six was like, Whoa, I'm going to get 1% more. But what about day seven? Let's look at that. I believe that looks like 1.036. The moment you have all been waiting for, day seven. Fermentation, the results are? 2.36%. What? Is that an instant replay? What? what? So that's really interesting. Why is it stalling here on day seven? I think because in the beginning you have a lot of sugar and the bacteria and yeast, they're eating up all the sugar, they're gathering steam, and then all of a sudden they start to slow down. There's not as much fuel left. Maybe it even starts to get a little bit sour. The pH starts to get in the range where they don't really eat as much anymore mm -hmm. and it just starts slowing down. So this might be nearly the max that we're going to reach. If you leave this in the fridge and let it go for, like we've done, for maybe a year, two years, it gets really, really dry, and I think it very slowly continues to eat all the sugar. What we're gonna do is continue on fermenting one of these ginger ales, and we're gonna test it over time. So we're gonna keep posting an update for you on the pinned comment below. So don't forget to check back. We're going to keep checking to see after two weeks, after a month, after, I don't know, maybe we'll leave it in the fridge for a year and see what it is. But we have one more surprise for you. We're gonna taste test each one of these so that we can recommend where we think the best tasting ginger ale falls. I think it's time for a taste test. Let's do it. And of course we have our red solo cups for taste testing because well, there's alcoholic content and everyone knows what's in a solo cup. Day one. Day one. All right, let's try it. Spicy, very sweet. Didn't taste like alcohol in that one. Day two, maybe I tell huh. a difference. It's very, very good. Yeah. A little bit spicy. Yeah, delicious. Day three, I can tell there's Ooh. alcohol in that one. Oh yeah. That makes sense. We're at 1.31. 1. 1. Day four. I like three days so far. It tastes almost the same. I guess that really does make sense because the alcohol content is the same. So day five, there ooh, you go. I'm expecting a little bit of a difference here. I feel like I can taste the yeastiness. It's definitely a little bit alcoholic. Just yeah, a little delicious. bit. Delicious. Just a little mm, bit. I like this one. Day six, definitely all of a sudden, not as sweet. And it you starts definitely... to taste a little bit um, sour too. That definitely has more alcohol. Ooh, I kind of like day five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, and that actually makes sense because that is our recipe. For the primary fermentation, we go three days and then we bottle for two days. So we usually like the taste of about five. Ready to try day seven? Yeah. I guess yeah. about the same. It's still very pleasant, but yeah, it's still about the same yeah. as that one. Still kind of sour. Now that we've tried them all, how about you try one and seven to compare both of them? <gasps> I can do that. Okay. All right, try one, one first. One and seven. One. It's just like sugar. It's just sweet. That one's sour and a little drier. Mm. Definitely alcohol content in this But you one. can taste the difference you... when you go to the extremes. Oh yeah, very, very different. 
between one day and seven day. Total opposites. Very cool. You mm -hmm. should try that at home. It's pretty cool. These two are kind of like the winners. We have a very good ginger ale at day five. Mm -hmm. Sweet, just very, very fresh. Yes. And then we have a day six. If you wanted a little bit more of a kick in alcohol content, you would go one extra day mm -hmm. and really get that like sour, not a sweet uh, uh, taste. It's like a punch. If you guys would like to make this recipe, check out this video right here or click on the link in the description below and that'll take you to our website that has the full recipe of exactly how to make this. And if you're interested in the hydrometer and you want to test your own as well, check that out. We're going to put the link in the description below. If you like this video, give us a like. We are also going to be doing this with many other fermented drinks and measuring the alcohol. So don't forget to subscribe. We appreciate every one of you. And don't forget to share this with your friends and get out there and create some culture. Is the measurement of what? Something. It's the density of a substance and the desti. Des <laughs> <laughs>